As of November 9, 2020, over 50 million people have been infected with the novel SARS-CoV-2 virus or Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome virus. Over 1 million individuals have died from this virus, while 33 million recoveries have occurred. This video will focus on the comparison between the recently discovered SARS-CoV-2 virus, which has caused COVID-19, and the SARS-CoV virus that caused the SARS outbreak in 2002. We'll touch on what coronaviruses are, the origin of SARS-CoV and SARS-CoV-2, their epidemiology and symptomology, as well as the latest advancements in a potential vaccine as a treatment. What is COVID-19? Coronavirus disease, or COVID-19, is an infectious disease caused by SARS-CoV-2. The virus belongs to the coronavirus family and is named after its crown-like spikes. There are four subgroups of coronaviruses, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. The alpha and beta coronaviruses are considered to have bat origins, while gamma and delta have bird origins. There are a total of seven coronaviruses that are infectious to humans, most notably MERS-CoV, SARS-CoV, and SARS-CoV-2, which are all examples of coronaviruses that can infect animals as well as mutate and become new coronaviruses. SARS-CoV and SARS-CoV-2 are two seemingly similar beta coronaviruses. Research has suggested that the two viruses share 79.5% of the same genetic sequence. In other words, this means that approximately 80% of their blueprint is similar. Both these viruses even bind to a common cell receptor to enter the cell, replicate, and produce viral proteins for infection. This receptor is known as the human angiotensin converting enzyme 2. Due to the similarities between the two viruses, it is believed and expected that many of the biochemical interactions will be similar. However, this is evidently not the case. Though they belong to the same family of coronaviruses, they have many distinguishing characteristics. For instance, SARS-CoV-2 has an incubation period of 1 to 14 days, while SARS-CoV has an incubation period of 2 to 7 days. An incubation period is defined as the number of days between infection and the appearance of symptoms. The SARS-CoV-2 incubation period length is the reason a 14-day quarantine upon exposure to COVID-19 is mandatory. There are three main symptoms associated with COVID-19, fever, shortness of breath, and cough. The most common symptoms associated with SARS are fever, malaise, which is a feeling of weakness, myalgia or muscle pain, headache, diarrhea, and shivering. Currently, there is no treatment for SARS and COVID-19. Supportive care is provided to ease debilitating symptoms and to prevent secondary infections. The basic reproductive rate, also referred to as r naught is a value that indicates how contagious a disease is believed to be. The 2002 to 2004 SARS epidemic had an r naught value of 2.75, while the projected r naught value for COVID-19 is 3. This means that a person infected with SARS is projected to infect up to 2.75 people, while a person infected with COVID-19 may infect up to 3 people. While this may seem concerning, it is important to note that the COVID-19 mortality rate is much lower than the SARS mortality rate. The SARS epidemic had a mortality rate of 9.7%, while the COVID-19 pandemic has a mortality rate of 3.2%. The hospitalization and intensive care unit, or ICU, rate is also significantly lower in cases of COVID-19. The COVID-19 hospitalization rate is 20%, compared to 70% for SARS. This suggests that, while transmission rates may be higher for the virus causing COVID-19, they are less likely to have severe outcomes that require prolonged hospitalization or ICU intervention. Note, this does not mean that preventative measures should not be followed. Please follow your local healthcare provider's suggestions to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Researchers all around the world have been working endlessly to find a potential vaccine for COVID-19. Recently, two companies, Moderna, which was co-developed with the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, and Pfizer, have created vaccines that have shown strong effective results. Moderna's mRNA-1273 vaccine candidate was found to have a vaccine efficacy rate of 94.5%, while Pfizer's vaccine is 95% effective and must be kept at extremely low temperatures. We could expect these vaccines to be administered to the general public soon, but not yet, as more clinical testing is required. These novel vaccines seem very promising and have given us newfound hope in the midst of this pandemic. Please note that the information in this video is based on information available since November 9, 2020. Information regarding COVID-19 is constantly evolving, so please remember to follow updated information and guidelines as they are made available. Thank you.